All right, boys and girls, I have got myself a set, set of fancy shades on today because I am trying... Well, this is a proper video, but before anybody gets real excited that I've got my top off in my head, I've told everybody to not move. So basically, this is the end of the day. It's... Uh, what is it? Today? Tuesday? Wednesday? It's late on the night, and I've told everybody to not be whizzing around the site. Everybody is finished for the day, gone home. There's me here, and there's one man waiting on the way bridge to load his van, and there's one man waiting to load this attic up here but I've told them not to do anything so don't get excited because I'm trying to make a video and this is a prop right I'm gonna tell you about when my site bent down this is not this is not a joke this is absolutely realistic my site bent down twice in two weeks okay and you will probably be shocked that the company who bent my site down would not admit any liability and would not give me anything towards the bill so there's a company near here two different companies who tip in my yard so i'm going to give you a bit of context a few years ago i got a new customer come on he rang me up said can i tip tip artic loads in your yard of sort of like unsorted materials you know stuff that they haven't messed about with and put it for our picking line so i said yeah of course you can mate no problem the first lorry comes, second lorry comes, no problem, we're processing everything else. And then we get a load one day, lorry turns up and he tips it on the corner of my building. And then within a, I don't know, six hours went home and on the night time, fire brigade ring me and our full building burnt down. We'd never had a fire before, we had a fire prevention plan but there was a lot of stuff in there that we didn't follow. So as you will see, this big loading chevalier was completely burnt to a crisp, not this one. So we had one before that which was brand new and what my boys had done is, as you'll see that shed there, they'd left it at the front of that shed and because it was within, I don't know what it is, 25 metres or whatever it is of the building, they would not pay out on the insurance. So we had a fire prevention plan. It was it was right back, it was 10 metres back, I think it was, that they measured it, and it had to be 15, or it was 20, it had to be 25, some bullshit anyway, some stupid stuff not to pay out. But it was outside the building, way outside the building. So, what I wanna discuss with you is, the second load, so the second load come, this was from a different supplier, and um, he brought us a load of waste in out of a dustbin lorry, tipped it on the corner, and within, uh, whew, again, four or five hours, the full thing, my full yard was ablaze. I've got all pictures and videos, so I'm going to show you. So keep watching this video, and I've actually got some videos of some transfer stations setting on fire. And what gave me the idea for this video is that literally a couple of nights ago, there was one of the biggest one of the biggest transfer station fires in the whole of the country i saw it on um i saw it on the news and everything else that was telling everybody about how bad it was and all that lot and you know it's a complete nightmare but you might ask how or why or whatever you know i'm going to go into the thing to do with the um the fire on mars site but basically top and bottom is you need to have as little waste on site as possible that's that's the top and top and bottom of the whole situation um as you can see this is our usual wood pile we've absolutely got nothing no got no wood in um yeah we know we've got a bit of got a bit of waste in there and uh that's going to be going into this trailer so we are pretty on top of the job keeping on top of it i'm going to go back to this fire that we had so bin lorry comes in tips load of rubbish on the side of the pile you can see it all on cctv and it sets on fire well anyway sorry there boys i got a bit disturbed so there might be a little bit of a gap in the video but going back to what i was saying this time last year we had a bad fire and i'm going to tell you what it was it was a lithium ion battery so i've got some footage obviously of my site burning down and i've got some footage that somebody sent me of another transfer station setting on fire it's real good footage um just the just literally lithi lithium batteries it's a chemical reaction i think that's what it is so when a lithium battery is crushed it the uh, there's a chemical reaction inside and that will set fire so i will show you these videos and i'm going to go in the office and we will finish the recording in there so the boys can get back so we are back in the office now and this video of the guy with the um lithium ion battery that they've sent me is absolutely mental 
And what I've done is I've had a look on the internet and found a video basically of a lithium ion battery and the process of why the blow up. I'll tell you what, it's as hot in my office today as it is outside. If I get this video on tonight, which I should do, because I've got a new computer, I've bought myself a new PC and I can make the videos real quick, you boys are probably dying of the heat as well. <laughs> really hot. But anyway, the lithium ion battery, how it works is the batteries get crushed, they basically swell, set on fire, and then one little battery provides its own fuel. So basically, it's just it will just continue to burn until the fuel's gone. By that time, your full sight's burnt down like mine was. And the problem is, with lithium batteries nowadays, they can set on fire by overcharging, undercharging. A lithium battery, I'm sure, can actually set on fire, even if it's got absolutely no charging it or very, very little. So how can you stop this sort of stuff happening on a waste site? You can't. Simple as that. Lithium batteries are in every single thing going now. I mean, how many people vape? I know you read online that it's, you know, 10%, 15% people vape. Well, I don't know anybody who doesn't. Literally, you know, you go places, you know, there's a lot of people vaping now. Every one of them vapes has a lithium ion battery in it, even down to your calculators. Anything rechargeable now usually has lithium ion in it. So, how can you protect yourself from it? So, after watching the videos of these things setting fire and you can see they're just literally set on fire, you know, without any help from anybody else, they will just go up. I think the only way to protect yourself from it is keep your waste piles as low as possible. You know, same as what the environment agency says about fire breaks and stuff like that. You know, leave a space between your waste. But the top and bottom of it is, you don't want loads of waste on your site. And if you have got loads of waste on your site, you want plenty of money for taking it. Because one of these incidents is can be pretty much total loss. In um, a big site at a landfill um, called Wally's, there's been another one, I think it was in Staffordshire. I'm just going to have a look. That one's called Sackers. I think that was one of the biggest fires I've ever seen. I was watching the uh, live video of it. And what you have to remember with these fires is people have a fire and they say stupid stuff like, yeah, but it's an insurance job. Right, what happens to waste when you wet it? It gets 10 times heavier, 20 times heavier, 50 times heavier. Then what do you do? You have to move it to somebody else, pay to get rid of it by the ton. Some of these fires can be a literal complete total loss for a business where they it can put them back 10 years 20 years 50 years i don't know how many years but you know puts them back into the stone age because how do you pay for it my machine in my yard when we had the fire wasn't insured it was burnt to a crisp absolute nightmare the second fire we had a couple of weeks later do you know what happened we had a fire not a single thing got damaged a few skips got burnt that was it because everything was moved away from it and if I can give you guys any advice if you've got a transfer station, this video really is for anybody who's got any kind of transfer station, waste, or anything else. I would go home on the night with the mindset that you will have a fire that night. And that is what I do. I go home and I say to them, listen, just think we're going to have a fire tonight. Get everything away, all the machinery out of anywhere. You know, all these waste transfer stations where the picking lines are inside buildings. I know that the rules say that they've got to be, but I tell you what, you have a fire in there and you're done. And that's it, you know. But then it comes back to the insurance premiums, the insurance premiums, £1,000 a week, you know, for insurance for a transfer station. For a small transfer station, you're probably £1,000 a week for just a normal small site, cover a couple of machines, you know, 50, 60 grand a year. If you've got a big place like some of these nationals, are watering money absolutely are watering you know you'd be talking five grand a week maybe in insurance so you know it makes it almost undoable and i'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there we're only little so insurance isn't too bad but i'm sure there's plenty of you people out there watching this video and you won't have any insurance at all i do completely believe that for you'll have your liability because everyone has that but you won't have your insurance if there's a fire on site and everything else you know, and touch wood, like I say, we've had two fires, I've had to rebuild buildings, you know, I have had 
the thick of it were fire you know i'm gonna do more videos about it and everything else this is just a you know this is just like a kick up the ass cause it's so hot you know don't take much to get one of them batteries going when they get warm you know but like i say go home from your site tonight and think we're probably gonna have a fire if you think like that you'll move everything away from anything that can set on fire really that's the you know that's the way that we look at it and that's the way we try and protect your assets because at the end of the day say you wasted set on fire from a lithium battery or whatever it is a machine scraping the floor you know if a building burns down that's one thing you can you know we can rebuild one if a machine sets completely on fire and it's gone there's now what you can do so you know just remember keep your machines out of your out of your building um you know and i hope you enjoyed the video of the lithium battery and these transfer station fires and uh, i will see you soon bye